We did this shell here and inlaid it into a um, circle or a, uh, what do you call it, an oval and then inlaid that oval into another oval because I stuffed the first oval. So here it is, I'll hold it the right way and that's the back of it. So what I thought, first job, we should inlay this into a box. Now before you do that, make sure that you get all the sticky tape off the back. Because if you don't, what can happen is it won't glue and it'll bubble and it'll blister. So I've taken all the sticky tape off. A great way to tell if you've got it all, this is gonna flare. But if you get a light and you play it under the light like that, actually I've got a bit just, I have to, look at that, slacker. Okay, I've got a bit right here, which you might be able to see now you haven't got flare. There's a bit of sticky tape that I've missed right there. So I'll just clean that off and to clean that off, I use one of these, which is a card scraper. Um, and it's just a question of gently, very gently, scraping off the sticky tape. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's the offending little bit right there. And I'll just make sure there's, oh, there's another little bit there. Just get it off. And I'm pretty sure that's right. Yep, okay. So that's what it looks like. And make sure that's gonna be the back. So make sure all the sticky tape is off from there. So what we can do now is inlay this into a box top. Now, I've got a heap of boxes. And this is the one originally I was gonna use. So we can work out whereabouts you want it positioned. So that's where that's going to sit. Okay, now I'm going to take this down with just ordinary sticky tape. When you're getting that first one on, it's a bit tricky because the little sucker can move on you if you're not careful. The sticky tape I use, as I said before, is Sellotape brand, and I find it um, doesn't leave a gummy residue. And as was last week, if you've got a, a piece of uh, wet and dry, that's 1200, but 600, 800 is fine. Just hold it on the edge of your bench and just give you a knife, a couple of rubs, and it brightens it up. And there we go. Now it's just a question of steady nerves. I won't put the light on because that'll flare it. Hold the blade up against the job that you're doing and very lightly cut through. Now this is exactly the same as when we're making the design. Don't do it all at once and don't try and cut through all at once or you can get into all sorts of bother. And make sure you're nice, nice and sharp. Now obviously when I'm cutting through this, what I've done, I've also cut the tape that's holding it down. So as soon as you've done that, get another bit of tape, put it over the top and hold it back down or else you'll come to this last little bit and your design will be flapping in the breeze like a I don't know what you got to be careful of two things one not running off from the design and actually marking the box top and the other thing is not coming in and going through the design that you're doing. 
And when you're going across the grain, which I'm just about to as I go down here, these pieces here, you're going to find the knife isn't going to cut as easily because it's actually going over grain. And you just can't rush this. I mean, if you spend so much time doing a nice design, just don't rush putting it in. And this is, this is a really delicate part, this when you're going around these sharp ends because the tendency of the knife is to go off. And when you're going over the cross grain, it's a bit nerve wracking. Okay, we're starting to come to a nice bit here in a minute. But again, because I've cut all this area here, I can get my finger under there. Get a bit of tape, put it over the top, and clamp it back down. Now, what I've done here, I'm coming around the corner, but the uh, situation can arise where I'll run into this long grain and cut this. So I'm going to spin the box around and then come back this way. So it's like when you're planing or when you're doing anything with timber, you go with the grain, not against it. And when I'm coming, this way, I'm actually going against the grain. Whereas if I turn it around and come from here and move around, I am going with the grain. And I think we're getting close to almost being done. All right, so if you can see, well, you can see where the sticky tape's been. So I've actually marked that um, inside here because we've got a cut going all the way around. So now I'll take the sticky tape off. There we go. What I did with this box top, which um, if I, I was doing a job, I wouldn't have done it. These boxes, I don't know if you've ever watched the um, YouTube videos I've got, the woodworking masterclass, but these boxes were made for season two. And in those days, uh, the television station had come around and they'd want to film six episodes in two days. So I had to have everything made in stages. And I made 37 of these flipping things in various stages. So I've actually... Um, yeah, sanded this veneer down, which has brought me from 0.6 of a mill to, I don't know, 0.3 or 0.4. I would, if I was doing inlay, I would leave this veneer as thick as possible at 0.7, then drop this in, then you can scrape it and sand the lot. Whereas doing it this way, I haven't got much veneer to play with. And what I'm doing here is just going around the box with the knife to make sure it's visible to me. And then we take this piece out and I'll show you a couple of ways of doing that. 